Can you can you hear? Can you get that audio? Getting that audio? Yes. Karam wa karibi na bilas. Ha. Wa karibi na bilas bas hada na. Bas na. Bas na. Ala jisr ala jisr kulli shqari. We had hoped to just document what life was like here for civilians in a city that's been under siege for over a year. The constant refrain from everyone we spoke to was, why isn't the U.S. doing more? dirt track through the desert. The main road is controlled by the Islamic State. We're traveling with the governor's detail in order to reach Ramadi. We were also slightly delayed this morning because of fighting in the center of the capital, which is the last part of Ramadi that is held by pro-government forces. Ramadi is the capital of Anbar. Normally it's home to about half a million people, but many have fled the fighting as IS attempts to take over the city entirely. With the situation growing increasingly dire in the small part of central Ramadi the government controls, the Lieutenant Governor of Anbar, Mustafa al-Jumeili, agreed to let us join him in his armored convoy from Baghdad. <laughs> أطراف الرمادي تسلك هذا الطريق اللي يكون مهم هذا الطريق القديم نسميه تبقى عن مطر الحكومي اللي نعم. إحنا نداوم به كانت الشرطة والمحافظة وقسم المجلس يعني بين 300 إلى 500 متر هاي الطاقة شو أحد الإطلاقة so they're they're literally less than half a kilometer in that direction yeah, exactly and they hit from by AK47 this one and this one and this one. <laughs> هذا ما دا يتحقق من عنده شيء فقط الضربات الجوية واللي بدأت تقل. That night, the lieutenant governor took us out to see some of the city's nightlife. For most of the last year, the only power in the city has come from generators. We're going to go talk to some people who are out on the street at restaurants. There are stores open. We're surrounded by a pretty heavy contingent of guards. And the curfew right now is still in effect for cars. These people are just allowed to walk. Assalamu alaikum. Did you see what happened today? Can you describe what life is like here? The 
the people we met in Ramadi seemed consigned to the idea that the rest of the city might soon be overrun. The next morning, we found out the governor and his men were as well. It's 6 a.m. We're at the lieutenant governor's house. Yesterday, the attack started at 5, and almost exactly at 6 this morning, uh, there was a car bomb, or certainly what sounded like a car bomb, uh, two or three of them followed by shooting. It seems clear that the Islamic State is intent on taking the remaining part of Ramadi that they don't control. We had hoped to just document what life was like here for civilians in a city that's been under siege for over a year. Um, Lieutenant Governor, half seriously, half jokingly, or maybe entirely seriously, asked if I might be able to reach someone who could call in American airstrikes. Yesterday, the, uh, the constant refrain from everyone we spoke to was, why isn't the U.S. doing more? The news on Iraqi television was mostly about the campaign being carried out against IS in northern Iraq, but the claims IS was on the run there felt hollow in Ramadi, where they were creeping closer to the governor's compound each day. We're standing in the courtyard of the governor's office, and there's still a bit of fire from a mortar strike yesterday. Nonetheless, the lieutenant governor is at work and in his office this morning. We decided to film for the rest of the day and leave Ramadi in the afternoon. We started at the hospital, where they were treating casualties from the last two days of fighting. None of the doctors in the hospital agreed to have their faces shown on camera, but one did agree to talk about the situation. More than 600 civilians have been killed in the last year. How much has the mortality rate risen in Ramadi or in Anbar as a result of the last year and three months? I'm an old, which is upshooted. As a person, we can say more than 150 percent. Now, all the cases was a war cases war accident, either by car bomb or by explosion or something like that. The cases is totally upshooted. Haram al Barha? Into Min Ramadi, or Ram Mukana? No, Min Ramadi. The majority of the cases need an intensive care unit, also by class uh, injuries, or injuries. And most of these are from yesterday or today? Five of nine patients is from yesterday. Three. And to know our situation. We are a human being. Every moment we are suffering. Because you know, once you go outside your home, you don't know whether there is a bullet in the air, or there is a car bombing beside you. Once you came to hospital, you face so many problems regarding the electricity, shortage of fuel, the oxygen, tap water, etc., etc. So we need the war to know. The fighting has also displaced hundreds of thousands. Some have fled to Ramadi from other parts of Anbar, others have fled to Baghdad. 
All over Iraq, schools have been converted into shelters for refugees. Here in Ramadi, 50 schools have been used for that purpose, while 11 schools are still being used for normal classes. How many families live here? يعني أكثريتنا انهزمت ركض بدون حتى تكرم أحدية ركضت ركض يعني بس في سبيل شلون تتخلص نفسها يعني لأنه مدفعية ما شاء الله وهم منا كضربون فصلنا إحنا شلون تقول بالنص بس فتحونا المدارس السيد القيم مقام هنا هو فتحنا المدارس الرجل و... ودخلت العالم بالمدارس وهاي عاد what will you do if this part of Ramadi is taken over by the Islamic State? As we drove out of the city, the soldiers at the checkpoint outside the governor's compound were preparing for another attack. For a minute, we weren't sure if we'd be able to actually leave Ramadi this afternoon. The road was blocked, and fortunately, uh, the driver managed to negotiate his way through the roadblock, but they were turning everyone else back, and people were actually running in the other direction. The soldiers at the checkpoint told the driver of our vehicle that they had intelligence that there is a movement of ISIS fighters toward this area and they said that they were quite concerned about being overrun. The following day the road out of the city was cut entirely. As we left Anbar to return to Baghdad, we joined refugees who continue to flee the fighting. This is the Zabis Bridge, which is the only crossing point between Baghdad and Anbar. It's been closed for the last two days because of the fighting in Ramadi, but now it's open again and families are using this opportunity to leave Anbar. Why are you leaving Ramadi? <laughs> What is the situation in Fallujah? If Ramadi falls entirely, it would be the second largest city under IS control. It is unlikely pro-government forces there can retake any ground without U.S. air support. For now, that support seems unlikely.